I'm Monica. You're Monica. Um, okay. Yes. yes, my name is Monica Trevino. And uh, my address, you said? Yeah. Oh, no, you don't know my address. No. No, but I would like to ask um, Supervisor Elias to uh, give my daughter an excuse for school because it looks like <laughs> we're going to go pick up Tarzan. <laughs> After this. <laughs> we're going to go pick him up. Add a divorce lawyer because my husband is not going to be very happy. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Anyways, um, yes, I am. Um, I have belonged uh, to the Sunnyside District uh, my whole life. Um, I have three daughters that all attend Sunnyside schools, and I come to you on behalf of my family and my daughters, and with a very a real concern. Um, we all know that there's obviously been a lot of you know, discussions about the corruption going on in Sunnyside. And you know, if I turn on the TV, I see the TV and the corruption in the papers, and, and I have all of this coming to me. And, and it upsets me, and it's humiliating. And and I have chosen, I want my daughters to know that we have to be honest and fair, and I try to do the right thing and give my daughters the right morals. What I'm asking is that the ballots uh, be counted on the day of the election, because I think it's fair that maybe you know every candidate has a, a witness there. I I see that as fair. We tell our children, you know, don't cheat on tests. Don't you know? And I'm not by any means uh, saying that Pima County is cheating. That I just don't know. I'm at a loss. I don't know Bobby Garcia, uh, Louis Gonzalez. I know that they're very powerful people, and I don't know the effects they have on 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 anybody else in in this whole. Makeup. I'm just a parent sitting back here looking at the bigger picture. I'm a registered voter, and I, with all due respect, would please ask that um, you help the community and help us to be fair to our children. I'm scared for my kids. I don't want to have to leave Sunnyside. I don't want to have to leave Sunnyside. I've been here my whole life. I live in the district, and it hurts. It just hurts. Thank you very much. My daughter would like to say a couple of things. Nicolette William. Hi, I'm Um A couple things I wanted to say is that I heard that we don't need paper and pencils anymore because of the laptops that we have now. I haven't had mine in three months because there's always problems with it. And there's very few kids at school with them, so we're always using desktops and going to other teachers' classes, and they don't always have them. So, and, um, they're all, it's always because of the same reasons, because the laptops break down. And so it's always paper and pencil for us. And another thing is that I have over 30 students in each of my classes, so it's hard for me to get the help that I need and the attention. And it has caused my grades to drop, because there's not enough teachers. And um, I'm, I'm kind of worried, because I don't want to leave Sunnyside. I've been here my whole life, and I don't want to change that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And you realize that this is called in the audience, so we can't respond. I do believe your issues are being addressed, and I think that Mr. Huckleberry, um, all of you who are here to talk about it, I think that they they probably have already been addressed. But because this is called to the audience, we um, we can't legally respond. So we just we appreciate you coming down here and sharing your concerns. Thank you. And Supervisor Elias is writing out your excuse right now. And right now, Supervisor Elias. <laughs> Ignacio Gomez. And again, I, I think we are. The issue is being addressed, but we can't have that discussion. Madam <laughs> Chairperson, uh, members of the board. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity of saying a few words concerning what's going on in the Sunnyside School District. Uh, it takes a blind man and somebody that can't hear to see or to not see what's been going on over there for years. And I just wanted to ask you the favor of making sure that everything is overseen and overlooked in the right manner. I am uh, an ex alumni of Sunnyside High School, grade school. I started there in the fourth grade and I graduated in 1961, uh, many, many moons ago, as my Yaki tribe would say. And uh, I just want you uh, to please 
make sure that everything is carried out according to Hoyle. Uh, we don't have recall elections every day. So it's a responsibility that, that we took to make this recall happen because we know what's been going on over there for the last seven years. The superintendent there before this one was there was my cousin. His name is Raul Becarano. I was elected to the Sunnyside School Board about two and a half years ago. I resigned after two weeks for the simple reason, and you can explain it to me. I was told that I'm not a resident of the district. Neither is Bobby Garcia. Uh, I was told that because I, 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 I didn't sleep in my bed at, at my house, that I wasn't a, a, a legitimate member of the board. And I was voted in by the, by, the, by the public, the people, the residents. But I'm not gonna talk about me. It, did, it happened, I thought it was wrong, it shouldn't have happened. I'm a taxpayer, I'm still, I vote out of that district to this day. Still vote there. They jumped on me right away concerning serving with papers drawn up by Louis Gonzalez, the president of the board. I was put under pressure right from the get-go. I'm just asking you to please be aware of what's been going on out there and to make sure that everything runs fair and equitable and that the ballots are counted in, in, in a proper way. We don't, wanna, we don't wanna have to go through the recall election process again because 95% of the people in Sunnyside School District want a change in that board. And we believe we should have a change in that board because of what's been going on over there. I want to thank you for your time. Thank you, Richard Hernandez. Chairman of the Sunnyside Recall Committee. As you probably know, we're 150 people who are dedicated to kids. The amount of obstacles and hurdles that my volunteers have had to force themselves with threats by elected officials as well. Intimidations, bullying, and you've already met some of my, my friends. New friends, by the way. I only met them 60 days ago when I started this. We've had, when you say the word recall, all politicians, they hide. They jump underneath their desk. State level, city level, county level, we've had no support whatsoever. Yet, this Sunnyside election has been written about in the LA Times, the New York Times, and the Washington Post. Something this small, this district so small, at least according to the elections, told me that this is such a small election, yet it's been written about at a national level. I'm really proud of the people in Sunnyside. They've had to tolerate the abuses that I have. So I'm coming to you and saying, we can see the finish line. Can you look? The finish line is just ahead of us. We're asking your help. The community is asking your help. 4,000 people who signed the recall petition are asking for your help. And all we're asking for is fair and equitable elections. Verifiable, witnessed by the community, and the candidates. It's pretty simple. So we're here today with a simple request. We're asking your help. I think the will of the electorate needs to be adhered to. And so I want to thank again my people in the community. I know they're out there. One, there's actually another candidate out there who's going to speak today, but Mike's out there. And so if you have a moment, drive by the south side. You'd swear it was a general election. There are signs everywhere. <laughs> there are mailings that go up regularly. It's discussed just yesterday at Sunnyside High School. They gave out awards. And my god, this is amazing, Sunnyside Schools. And I was, I was talking, I was thinking, Dr. Garcia that you all mentioned, I knew his parents. You know where he grew up? In Sunnyside District. His house, his mom, mom and dad's house is in the Sunnyside District. How do I know this? Because I know his parents. 
we produce doctors and lawyers and even some politicians. So we're all about community. That's what I'm all about. And although I've been labeled by lots of people, including some people on this board privately, okay, I can share with you very clearly, we are about kids. Help me be about kids. Make sure the selection is fair to all the candidates. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Bill Beard. Thank you, uh, uh, Supervisor Bronson, members of the board. Uh, I was had some prepared remarks, but uh, based on some uh, things that I understand have occurred uh, earlier today, uh, you alluded to them uh, uh, in Mr. Huckleberry. Uh, I will just simply say this. The eloquence of the parents, the folks associated with the recall, um, let me interrupt you just a minute. I want everybody who's here just for Sunnyside before these folks leave, can you just stand up so we know that that's what you're here for? I want to thank you all for coming, and um, we certainly are listening, but again, we can't respond. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Bill. Not a problem. I, I, I heartily uh, concur. Uh, bottom line, the... Uh, when the citizens speak, it is incumbent upon government to make sure that the voice is actually heard. And um, uh, at an earlier point in my life, I was a school teacher. Uh, the kids would come in every day with a hunger for knowledge, a hunger for the information as a teacher I could provide them. Uh, it, it was my responsibility to do so. They succeeded or they failed based upon what I did. The success or failure of the election should not be called into question by anyone. You folks have the ability to make sure that elections are heard, they're verifiable, etc. Please make sure that the Sunnyside parents are heard, the voters are heard, and regardless of who wins, there is no doubt about the future of Sunnyside. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then Al, it looks like Arreo, Ariano. Is that you? Yeah, Ariano. Ariano. I was, yeah, okay. I see it now. Well, uh, thank you for allowing me to just have a couple of minutes uh, to address the board here. I really appreciate the time that you're taking to hear us out. And I know that an issue has been resolved where uh, the ballots will be counted on election day, which is the primary reason that we were here uh, for that issue. And thank you supervisors for taking that active role. Uh, the next piece of concern would be to please allow and push for our recorder to let there be observers at the polling station. It's pretty much common sense to let there be observers where people are voting to ensure that it is fair and balanced. And uh, I'd like to actually reach out to Mr. Ramon Valdez since that is your district there, to please weigh in heavily and, and, you know, as president and chairman of Legislative District 2, you are you fall under my supervisory area as well, and so does Mr. Supervisor Ray Carroll. So I appreciate you taking the time for this and really adhering to what the public is asking for. We have a lot of people, like Mr. Hernandez said, 4,000 people signed a petition to recall these guys. They want them out, and we just want to ensure that there's irrefutable evidence there that regardless of who won, it was fair, it was balanced, and we were hurt. So thank you very much, and I really appreciate your time again. Thank you. Sergio, did you want to speak also? Sir my name is John Brafey. My address is 5947 South Placita, Picacho, El Diablo. And uh, uh, first off, I want to thank Brad Nelson. That's going to be a shocker. It is. <laughs> uh, for moving the counting of the ballots to happen Tuesday at 1. And I want to thank Allie Miller for your great letter and for standing up for the voters and for the rest of you who put pressure. You go ahead, I want to thank you too. And, uh, but we still have a couple of minor issues to resolve because, you know, making a small election transparent and verifiable, both the two key words for this election that we have a chance to do. Transparency to the point that let's say we're going to have three locations that any of the observers have been banned from, and that they will have uh, a DRE working there, and that they will have voting booths, even though they're calling it, uh, you know, ballot drop off centers. Well, they're not. And people will be voting because a lot of people do not want to vote by mail. I'm one of them. I always vote at a precinct. Now, here's another shocker 
I'm going to vote on a DRE. Because the envelopes are supposed to be privacy envelopes. But something happened the last few years that they're not. It used to be that when you mailed in a ballot or did a provisional, the tab was removed. And when that tab was removed, the ballot went over to the election department and it only had a number on it, a tracking number. Now, when they open the ballot at the election department, they actually see who it's from. I don't want anybody at the election department. I represent two fine candidates running for the same position. And you know, it's only between me and God who I vote for, okay? And I, and I represent all the three candidates, and two of them are opposite party, even though it's a nonpartisan. That's something I just want to bring to your attention. The next issue, just real simply, is that uh, I asked Brad, after I bowed to Brad and thanked him, because it was shocking to me that he moved it to one, because those were asking for 7 a.m. I asked him that if we could have this nonpartisan election of service inside, and I said, I will not be one. I would like to go ahead and nominate Mickey Donahoe, which is your man. And he said, absolutely not. Right now, we have two observers in a nonpartisan election that, uh, that are partisans. And one is a Republican and one is a Democrat. This is a nonpartisan. We feel that we are entitled as candidates and observers of those candidates in the political party to go ahead and be in there. So I would ask your help into going ahead and taking this because we can make this election transparent and verifiable. If we go ahead in election day, count the ballots in batches of 500, and if we have 6,000 ballots, that means we'll have 12 batches. The next day, let's randomly pick one batch and count it. Election over. No litigation. Simple. We have did an election. Made it work. John, John, it is transparent. Time, your time is, is up. I'm I'm sorry. up quickly. Uh, so your they, points, just real quickly, go the, over. We wanted to make the election verifiable. We want to go ahead. If there's 12 batches of ballot, 500 each. One ballot batch is picked randomly, and we count that the next day, election over. We want access to all of the facilities that are voting, because these are voting centers. They're not ballot drop-offs. I get pictures. You've got three booths set up okay. and a machine. And I thank you for your time. Thank you.